Hello, my name is Gregory Scott, and this is my game Armored Commander 2, the World War II Tank Commander Roguelike. This is the second in a series of quick start videos. The first video, if you haven't seen it already, ran through um, starting a new campaign, uh, equipping your tank, going out on the campaign day map, and um, before very long, I think it was only sort of a few minutes into the day, we got stuck into a battle. And at the end of that video, I went over all of the various different um, parts of this interface to say what they mean, and now we are uh, well, and uh, well and truly engaged in a battle with the enemy. So let's go through uh, each of the phases and I'll walk you through the steps in fighting a battle. So we start with the command phase. This is key because the command that we give to our different crewmen, they're stuck with that command for the whole of the rest of the turn. So we need to decide now what they're going to be doing over the next um, two minutes or so. We're not doing too badly. We only have one enemy unit out there, but we have no idea what it is. So one of our first priorities is spotting and identifying what is actually out there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the um, hatch for my commander so he can spot. The, the loader doesn't have a hatch. And without that, he can only spot one hex away, which is not really doing much of anything. But if we look at the other commands for the loader, operate a machine gun, which we don't, uh, which is, is probably out of range. Reload the gun, we haven't even firing, fired it yet. yet. Uh, manage the ready rack, we haven't done any firing either. First aid, nobody's wounded. Swap position, we don't need to do that. Everybody's in a good position or a spot. So basically, in, uh, in the absence of anything else, just leave your crewman on spot. It's kind of the, the, the default order of them just keeping their eyes out for anything that might be out there. Um, what I will do, however, is I'll get my, uh, my driver already has his hatch open. He's gonna spot as well. The more eyes that we can try to get um, on a concealed enemy, the greater chance that we'll have to, uh, to spot them. Uh, and the assistant driver, again, not a whole lot that they can do of, uh, of help, so we'll just kind of leave them on spot as well. So I'm going to end the phase. Um, I think the next phase is actually the spotting phase. So the game is going to do some calculations and sort of roll some virtual dice in the background. If we're lucky, we will see and we will, we will spot what that enemy is. We weren't lucky, it remains concealed. Unfortunately, we weren't able to, uh, to spot it. And very quickly, it just ran through all of the phases and essentially nothing happened because we didn't spot the enemy unit, the enemy didn't spot us, and it didn't move around either. So now we have another chance to spot it. Uh, I'm sure the rain doesn't help either. At the moment, the, um, the weather conditions are heavy rain. It's gotta make it much more difficult. I'll do one more round and if we don't spot it, then I'll, I'll take the risk of actually uh, moving closer. Still nothing, so I don't want to waste too much time trying to see this thing at a distance. I'm feeling lucky. I'm going to command my driver to move, and I'm going to get him to button up, because why leave him exposed? And I'll give him a drive action. So now that we've given the driver a drive action, um, when it comes to the movement phase, the game pauses and allows you to drive, allows you to input commands. If you don't give your driver the drive command, there's nothing you can do in the movement phase, so the game will just skip by it but now we have things that we can do. So as I said um, in the earlier video, this map is abstract. It's sort of projected um, onto your tank from above, and as you move, the map moves with you. Uh, so we could try to move forward, in which case, uh, if we're successful at it, this unit would come closer to us. It would be moved down into here, into medium range. Um, at the moment, probably because it is wet ground, we only have a 60% chance for a successful move action. If not, it basically means that within this zone, which is like, you know, approximately, so if that's zero to 120 meters, these zones are like 240 meters wide. So within that, there's a lot of moving you could do. Maybe we start out moving and, and we discover our way is blocked and we have to take a detour. Lots of things can happen within that two minutes that means actually we haven't moved far enough to be considered in, a new, in, in one of these new hexes. So that's what sort of a, fa a failure means. If we're, we don't do a successful move, we're, we're driving away, but we don't actually move far enough to be considered to be uh, in a new hex. Um, we can pivot the hull. So as I said, and you hear that's the hull pivot sound, at least for the moment. Um, as I mentioned, as you pivot, you don't rotate, the world rotates around you. So if I pivot clockwise, this unknown uh, unit will go counterclockwise around me. And it sounds like a Commodore 64 techno sound. I'm sure, I'm sure I could add in some kind of a synthesizer. Uh, maybe, maybe in a future update. 
Um, so we don't want to pivot the hull, though. We want to get closer. Uh, two of the other things that we can do um, in the movement phase is we can attempt HD, which stands for hull down, basically moving into a position where your tank is behind something solid, a stone wall, a hill or something, so that just your turret is kind of poking above the top. It's a very strong defensive position to be in. You can't use your hull weapons in that case, but you have a lot of protection from incoming fire. Um, not really something we want to do because we still don't know what we're facing. We can also reposition, which will move us within the same hex, potentially giving us a new type of terrain and potentially also changing the line of sight between us and the enemy unit. Um, at the moment, even though this enemy is concealed, there is nothing kind of solid between us and them. If we were to spot them, we could start shooting at them right away. Um, later on, we might get into a situation where the line of sight is blocked. So there is like a hill or something solid in the way where even if we know that they're there and we know who they are, we can't attack them because there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's an obstacle in the way. So if we wanted to change our position in relation to the enemy, but not really move around the map too much, we could give a reposition order, which is just move into a new position within the same hex. But again, we don't want to do that. We want to move forward. So I'll give it a try. There we go. Success. And we spotted the enemy unit. So we're back. Another turn has passed. We're back in the command phase. But the difference now is that we know what we're dealing with. It is a Polish armored car. It has a 37 millimeter gun. Uh, it's a short barreled gun. Otherwise, it's this, basically the exact same gun as we have. As you can see, however, the, it's an armored car, so its armor is very, very light. Um, zero in game terms means anything from one millimeter to, I think, nine millimeters of, of, of armor plate. So it's not unarmored, but it is very, very, very lightly armored. You know, it's a, a good heavy machine gun could probably pierce through it um, at that level. Whereas for the most part, the, the 38T um, is pretty much immune to small arms and machine gun uh, in machine gun fire. So we've spotted our enemy. It's not too much of a threat to us. Um, we, can, we know something about it. It is in broken ground, so it doesn't have a whole lot of sort of terrain around it protecting it. Um, broken ground is kind of like, like little hills and, 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 and muddy, muddy areas and things like that, rocks and stuff like that. Um, its hull is facing away from us. Its turret is also facing away from us. So if we were to fire it, it would be in the rear of its armor. It's already got zero armor, though, so it's not really going to have that much of an effect. Um, but as I mentioned before, HD stands for hull down. This enemy unit is right now hull down in our direction. So there's something, in, there's something between us and the, and the target, a stone wall, a hill, a building, something solid enough that if we were to fire a shell and it is aimed right in a, at its hull, it's going to hit that first and not the target. Um, in most cases, not 100% of the time, but in most cases, it'll be blocked. So not a, not a great position to be in, but honestly, I'm, uh, I'm pretty hopeful. I just want to give it a shot. So um, the, commander, uh, the, uh, the, the commander in the 38T has two roles, to command the tank in general, but also to operate the gun. Um, if we had a, a different tank with, say, five crewmen where there was a separate gunner and a commander, the commander can use this command called direct fire, which basically means he's kind of at the top communicating with the guys on the guns, pointing out targets and helping to call in fire and increases accuracy. Um, in this case, uh, direct fire only works, it only has an effect if you have the loader operating the coax machine gun, for example. The only, um, the only position in this tank that can operate the gun is the is the gunner so we can't use direct fire um we don't have to use a smoke grenade i'm not really worried about an armored car at least i'm not worried now hopefully it won't won't actually turn around and, and fire us we'll see um what we so what i want to do is operate gun i want to get him on the gun i want to get him to use it in the shooting phase for the loader i want you to reload that'll increase uh, the odds that we can have uh, more than one uh, shot in the same phase uh, the driver doesn't need to drive anymore he can just stop Assistant driver can, I suppose, pass ammo, although we might not need it because we have a full ready rack. I'll get into that in a moment. So again, command phase, we've set the commands for all of our, um, all of our crewmen. We can now proceed. So now in this turn, because we have at least one crewman on an operate gun command or operate some kind of weapon command, the game is paused in the shooting phase. And this is where we actually get to fire stuff off and to try to try destroy things, which is the fun part. 
So as before, all of your commands are detailed for you, for you down here in this little command menu. W and S will go sorry, up, and, up and down a kind of an imagined list of weapons or ammo types of a, of a given weapon. So we have a 37 millimeter long barreled gun with high explosive and armor penetrating ammo. We also have a coaxial uh, machine gun. So this is a machine gun that's mounted on the same axis as the main gun. But in the command phase, we told our commander stroke gunner to operate the gun, not to operate the machine gun. So even though it shows us the option, it reminds us, hey, there's nobody operating this weapon. You can't actually fire it. And if I try to hit F, nothing will happen because nobody is, is actually on the gun. Same thing for the, the hull, hull machine gun. Um, we can select a target for it, but it doesn't matter because no, nobody is operating the hull machine gun. And in any case, it only has a one hex range, so there's nothing for it to fire at. So we want the main gun and we want armor penetrating because even though it's just a little armored car, it's still armored, it's, it's got some armor penetration on it. And we want to activate the ready rack. Uh, remember in the last video, I mentioned the ready rack is like a little box of ammo right next to the gun, right next to the loader. As um, you fire, it, it, uh, it, recy uh, it recycles the, um, the, the, the shell or the, the shell casing from the old round gets kicked out. The loader wants to, wants to ram a new shell right into the gun. He has a sort of a, a box of ammo right there. He doesn't have to reach down or have somebody else pass it to him. It's right there at hand. So what this does is by enabling it, you can see if we don't use it, we have a 25% chance of rate of fire. If we enable it, it goes up to 33.4% chance of a rate of fire. And with skills, you can increase that even more. Rate of fire is basically the odds that after firing, you get a second shot or a third shot. You can continue to successfully get rate of fire indefinitely until you run out of ammo, perhaps. Um, you, don't, you can't shoot it at a different target, and you don't get to know the results of a shot. You know if it hit or not, but you don't know if it penetrated or not um, until your, all of your attacks are finished for that gun. Um, it's, it's trying to get close to the real world experience of basically firing. You can see that you've hit, but this target is you know, hundreds of meters away from us. We don't know if it hit and just damaged something inconsequential. We don't know if it hit and, and you know, killed the entire crew because it ignited some kind of a little, ex like an explosion inside. When we're in the heat of the moment and firing, we can't stop and see and take a look and say, hey, what did that do? You just wanna keep firing shells as fast as you can. So you have to basically make a decision whether you wanna keep firing as you fire, you can't wait and see, oh, this one penetrated or it didn't. Um, uh, you have to basically leave that until the end. Um, but a maintaining rate of fire can be very, very powerful, especially against difficult um, targets, because if the first one perhaps doesn't penetrate or it doesn't do damage, the second one certainly could. So we look up here in the little contextual um, uh, uh, console, this little display here. As I mentioned, this will show different types of information depending on the phase. Right now it's showing us what our main gun and our selected weapon, um, its uh, ammo levels. And at the bottom here, you see this beautiful message, ready to fire. Our commander gunner is operating it. It has a target. And if you'll see down here, use the A and the D keys to select your target. There's only one out there, so it's not really gonna do anything. Um, another thing that we can do in the shooting phase, we don't need to, but I'll just show you, is we can rotate our turret around. And as we rotate it, you can see the area that our gun covers changes as well. But again, it's close enough to the front that we don't need to rotate it. And in fact, we don't want to because rotating brings a penalty to fire. So we're ready to go. Let's fire. Um, during attacks, you'll see that the left column here changes, excuse me, changes to a different display. You see the attacker, uh, the weapon, the ammo type, the target, base chance to hit, and then a list of the modifiers of that chance to hit. So right now you can see that this attack, it's more difficult because of the environmental conditions. There's heavy rain. It's a relatively small target, so it's harder to hit. It's in broken ground, so maybe it's got some sort of some, you know, rocks or shrubs or something around it that make it a little harder to see. So there's a moderate impact there. However, we do have a long Let's say it's a long barreled gun for a 37 millimeter. So we get a bonus to hit for that. And that's based on the range. Um, however, it is a small caliber gun and it's gonna have more trouble um, uh, throwing things accurately at longer, at longer ranges. So we have a small penalty there. Uh, the last modifier you can see is just plus 3% for crack shot. And that was one of the skills that I added 
um, I think at the end of the last video to our, our uh, commander gunner. Um, so with different skills, you can get different modifiers directly to the chance to hit. So base chance to hit is 72%. All of these modifiers get added up and applied. In the end, we have a 19% chance of a hit. And that's shown in kind of a visual form here of 19% of this little bar being filled in. The blue here is a critical hit. Um, the gray here is kind of an automatic miss. If you roll too high, uh, no matter how good of a chance you have, there's, there's always a limit. I think it's 97% is the highest two hit chance you can get because something could always go wrong. You could mis misjudge the windage or something could happen and you, uh, you end up missing. So let's, let's fire away and uh, see how we do. So we needed 19% or less. Our roll was 29.1. So that's not good enough. It has to be equal to or lower than the chance to hit to actually hit. That ends up being a miss. However, we got lucky because we maintained our rate of fire. So now we have the option. We can fire again right away, or we can just stop firing with this gun. And if we stop firing, we can't come back and say, actually, I want to fire again we, uh, during this turn. We need to make this decision now. So of course, yeah, we're going to fire again. Now you'll notice when we fire again, the odds are going to change. Oh, that was a really bad miss. We didn't even get in the right, in the right county. Um, but our odds changed. You'll notice that they were 19%. They've gone up to 29%. That's because we now have one level of acquired target. Our gunner fired once, saw that it missed, but had a pretty good idea about how to adjust the gun to hit it on the second shot. So now it's going to be easier. And um, uh, luckily, because we've maintained rate of fire, we get another chance to hit. On, at this time, it's going to be even a little bit easier to hit because we'll have the second level of acquired target. Uh, unfortunately, it only, only goes up to two levels. So you can't just build, 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 build until you've got like plus 90%, but it will be slightly easier to hit. Maybe we'll get a hit this time. Let's see. We did. So we rolled 5.5, which is good enough for a hit. But as I said, this armored car is behind something solid, a hill, a stone wall. We hit that hill or stone wall. We, you know, our gun was on target, but its hull was too well protected to actually be hit. The, the shell hit the dirt and did no damage. But look, we've kept rate of fire again. We've got the best like loader in on the entire battlefront. So let's try again. Ah, luckily this time we hit. It wasn't hull down, it hit the turret. It's a good hit, it counts. And we've, uh, we didn't maintain our rate of fire. Um, but still, I mean, that was, that, was still a, that was still a pretty good run. I'm glad we got a hit in the end. So at this point, the only command open to us is to hit tab to continue. That'll just dismiss that, that attack sort of display and go back here. Now you might say, um, Greg, we hit a target and now nothing's happened. Is that, is that a bug? Is it just, uh, you know, has, you know has, we, we hit the target, but we don't know what happened to it. Any hits that you make or any firepower that you apply through explosions, through machine guns, the results are only calculated and only determined at the end of the shooting phase. Because you could have a lot of guns on this tank. You could have maybe two main guns. I mean, some tanks had multiple guns. You can now go to some other crewman, have him man the gun and just keep firing and just continue to do attacks until you don't have any more attacks. Um, our main gun, however, has fired already. You can see it says fired. We can't use the main gun anymore this turn. We'll have to wait until next turn. Um, but the hit still counts. And in fact, as soon as we end the phase, it will determine what the effect was on our target. It will resolve that one hit that we got. If we had gotten multiple hits, it would resolve them all in a row um, after, after the end of the phase. So we got one hit. It's going to now resolve it. You see a sort of a similar display here as, as, um, as when we did the attack. Armor penetration. This um, armored car was hit by a 37 millimeter long barreled gun, that was us, by an AP round, which we fired, and it was in the rear in the turret. If you remember, um, when we saw this target initially, we saw its hull was facing away from us, its turret was facing away from us, and it was hull down. So when we hit it, of course, it's gonna be hit in the rear um, armor. Uh, so rear facing, uh, the base score to penetrate is based on the, the caliber of gun that we use, um, uh, later on, um, they're not in the game at the moment, but uh, later on in development, when I add um, uh, sabot rounds and other kinds of, um, you know, tungsten tipped ammunition and things like that, um, the base score to penetrate will go up if you use these kind of special armor penetrating rounds. Um, at the moment, most guns just use kind of a standard AP round. 
but the larger the caliber and also the the longer the barrel the more power is behind it so you get this increased base score to penetrate whatever you happen to, uh, happen to hit um, so it was medium range, that's minus one. We hit it in the rear facing, that's plus one. It had zero armor, so there's no armor modifier. It ends up with a base score required of nine. Um, and this score is kind of a holdover from tabletop war games in that it represents the score required on two six-sided dice to, to succeed. So um, what the game does is basically calculates what the percentage chance is of getting nine or less on a, on a 2d6, as we call it, or two six-sided dice. That ends up being 83.3%. Um, I thought about changing the system, but in the end, it's so elegant and simple just to have this kind of abstract score, and it then translates directly into a percentage chance. Um, I figured I might as well leave it in. Because in the end, all you have to do is hit tab to continue, and it will do the, the penetration roll for you. So we got lucky. I mean, already it was pretty much assured, but we did get lucky. We could have, if we had have rolled over 33.3, .3, it would have bounced off the armor. You know, it's rare, but it can happen. But we rolled lucky. The round hit the back of the turret, penetrated right through into the interior of the vehicle and destroyed it. So that's victory. We destroyed one armored car. We held our zone because we were, this armored car started careening towards us and started attacking us. Um, and we held our own, we, we, we held our spot in the world, and now we've uh, held on to this. And we have destroyed one unit um, in, our, in the game. And you might notice that we do get a small amount of victory points um, for destroying units. Um, usually you get more points through, um, through capturing terrain and, um, uh, and uh, completing objectives, but that also uh, um, it differs depending on the, the mission for the, for the combat day. And also North Africa has a bunch of special rules and things are done differently where destroying units counts for much more and you get a larger victory point bonus um, compared, to, compared to other sort of theaters or other areas of war. So that's the basics. And from here, it just becomes a game loop of moving around on this map, on the campaign day map. For example, we can move into a friendly territory and there's no danger of, uh, of encountering resistance or we can recon an enemy held territory and then maybe move into it and try to capture it um, and that's basically how the game is played every time we encounter resistance or we are ourselves attacked we go into that same layer and sometimes it might not just be one armored car it could be like three tanks and an infantry pl platoon or it could be an anti-tank gun or all kinds of nasty stuff depending on sort of uh, the random number generator and whether it's 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 you know how it's feeling today and what it decides to give us so I'm gonna end the second video here. Um, I've given you a sort of an introduction to the basics. There's a lot more that I could talk about and I definitely wanna record more videos in the future. We could talk about injuries because of course, even though in that battle we did quite well, in others you're gonna have things firing at you, you're gonna have explosions happen, crewmen are gonna get injured, what do you do when they are? Um, uh, you, uh, we can also talk about sort of the different strategies that the AI uses. Um, I think in that battle, that armored car really didn't do anything. It just kind of sat there and we we were lucky enough to destroy it in the first round. It didn't even have a chance to fire back. But um, we can talk a little bit about sort of the different matchups and different types of enemies, um, how you um, how you can go about um, dealing with them and, and what various strategies might be for different types of enemies as well. So um, hope you enjoyed it. I hope this is sort of a um, Maybe not so brief introduction to how the game is played, but at least I was able to scratch the surface and just give you a sort of an introduction to, uh, to what it's all about. Okay, until next time.